Hello and welcome to part three of the Massive X tutorial series. My name is Nikos and I'm doing this on behalf of Soundfly Music Academy. Now today I'll be taking you through the envelopes and the LFOs as well as a bit more on the routing matrix and how you can use it to create interesting and unique sounds. So let's get right to it. So over here we've got the routing matrix. Now unlike the filters and the insert effects and the oscillators in order to actually get an envelope to do something you don't have to route it anywhere from the routing page. The modulators, the envelopes and the LFOs and the tracking modulators and the performers, they're gonna do something to the sound without having to touch the routing matrix. Now, by default, envelope one is routed to the volume of the entire synth, the amplitude of the whole synth. So for example, if I turn down the sustain and decrease the decay, we're going to get a very quick, sharp, stabby sound. Just like that. Let me increase the cutoff a bit. If I increase the sustain, we've got a sustained sound. The release attack. Now let me just, just in case you don't know what ADSR and all these controls do, let me walk you through them quickly. Attack is how long it takes for the amplitude to go from zero, from nothing, to full. So if I turn up the attack, it's gonna take a while for the sound to build up. And you can actually see that represented here in this static graph. I wish it was a moving graph so we could actually visually see what we're doing, but at least you can still see this is the attack. Attack at zero, amplitude all the way up immediately. Attack further up slowly raising. Now I said it takes, now I said it's how long it takes for the amplitude to go from zero to full. This is somewhat true, but in massive, massive X, you can turn down the peak, which would turn down how high the level reaches at the end of the attack stage. Okay. Now it still sounded like it was the same because the sustain is all the way up and the sustain is what happens when you're holding down the note at the end of the attack and the decay period. So if I turn the sustain all the way down, have a listen now. See how the higher the peak, the higher the amplitude gets. The shape is simply whether it's convex or concave. So for example, the shape would change the attack to this or this. So to the left, it's more like this. To the right, it's more like this. And in the middle, it's linear. The decay is how long it takes for the sound to go from the end of the attack stage. So if the peak is at the top, it would be maximum amplitude down to the sustain stage. So if the sustain is at zero, the sound will go down to zero amplitude. If the sustain is turned up, it will get to that level and then stay there as long as you're holding down the note. So if I turn up the sustain, the volume increases or reduces as long as I'm holding down the note. Now, as soon as I let go of the note, it reaches the release stage and the release determines how long it takes for the note to reach zero once you let go of the note. Now you have two hold controls here which creates a little delay between each stage. So for example, let's say sustain was at zero. At the end of the attack stage, it would then be held at that level for a certain period of time, and then it will get to the decay where it will decay to zero. Same thing with the hold here. Once I let go of the note, it will be held there for a bit, and then it will release. A couple more things. You've got velocity here, which basically means if I turn this up, the harder I play the note, so the higher the velocity is, the higher, the more sustain you would get, first of all. So if sustain was here and the attack is at zero, if I play the note with 40% velocity, that's the level, 100%, the level increases. Keep in mind the decay and the attack stay the same, but it's the sustain that increases. Okay, very cool. So this, what, what this can do for you, by the way, is make it sound more like you're playing a real instrument. <clears throat> a 
as though you're actually, you know, a real performer, a real instrumentalist, the harder he would hit the string or the key, the louder the instrument would be. The delay is basically just delaying the start of the envelope. So if I've got the delay there, I would pay attention to the QWERTY keyboard over here. I play the key and then the sound comes in. It's delayed. Now you might think this isn't very useful for the volume. Of course not. For the amp envelope, it's not very useful. But let's say we had envelope two turning up the volume of oscillator two. So yes, that's right. I, I grabbed this um, crosshair, dragged it to any one of these modulation boxes, and then I clicked and dragged up or down to determine the amount of modulation. In the routing, let's route oscillator two to the filter. And now what's gonna happen is, depending on the settings on this envelope, oscillator two will come in. Now, if I delay the envelope, oscillator two won't play until that delay time is over. There you go, and you heard it coming in a second or so later. Have a listen again, and let's have a look at it. And that's where it comes in. Fantastic. Okay, this modulation envelope is exactly the same. In fact, the amp envelope and the modulation envelope and modulator three can all be assigned to the, norm, to the same modulation envelope. But the idea is that the amp envelope controls just your amplitude, the volume of the synth. You use the rest, the other envelopes, to modulate parameters. For example, I could modulate the filter frequency, the cutoff, as it's also known as, so that it opens immediately as soon as you press the note and then closes. So let me show you what that would be. Sustain at zero, attack at zero, decay pretty quick. Turn the delay down. There you go. I can change the shape. So remember that makes it convex and concave or linear, which is really cool. The old massive synth, well, the previous massive, not massive X, you couldn't change the shape of the decay and the attack stages. Very cool. Now, a couple more things you should be aware of is here. First of all, as it is now, every new note I play, the envelope resets. If I put it in mono, if I play the first note, the envelope will activate. As long as I'm holding down that note, when I play the second note, the envelope will not activate, hence the word mono. If I let go of the notes and play a new note, it will activate again. Note off, it's pretty cool. The envelope doesn't activate when you play the note, but it activates when you let go of the note. So if you want a little buzz every time you let go of the note, it can be pretty nice. Okay. And reset, just make sure that it resets the envelope from the very beginning. Every time you play a new note, even if you play multiple notes at the same time. A couple more things, let's go back to the amp envelope. I'm gonna take this away, turn it up. Gate and one shot. So gate is every time you play a note, the envelope will activate. When you let go of the note, it will get to the release stage. One shot means even if I just tap on the note, it will be sustained and it will finish at its own accord when the envelope actually goes through every stage. So even if I just tap the note, it's gonna go through every stage. Okay, and finally, I just wanna show you the loop gate and loop function. So the way this works is the same way as an LFO. So if I turn loop gate, uh, loop gate on and it's modulating the filter frequency, you're gonna hear it basically repeating the decay cycle again and again and again, the decay stage. Just like an LFO. Now, if I turn up the attack, it's actually not going to get to the decay stage. It's gonna keep repeating the attack stage. Okay. Now, if I turn down the attack and up the, the sustain, it's not going to loop the decay stage either. It's just going to sustain. 
So the sustain must be turned down and the attack must be turned down in order for the decay stage to be looped or the attack must be turned off in order for the attack stage to be looped. But imagine automating these controls it can be really, really interesting. For example, <coughs> something that can actually be a little bit difficult to achieve with an LFO. Now loop is the same thing. The only difference being that when you let go of the note, it will continue looping until the note dies out, which is determined by the amp envelope. Whereas with loop gate, when you let go of the note, it goes straight to the release stage. Okay. Now onto the exciter envelope. The exciter envelope is can, can seem quite complicated. A lot of people have wondered what it does, but it's actually really simple. It's exactly the same thing as an LFO, but only for one cycle. And technically it cannot be tempo synced. So let me walk you through the controls. The ratio is basically how long it takes for the cycle to complete. So I'm going to assign envelope three to modulate again, the filter cutoff. Turn up the ratio. Did you hear that? The cutoff opens, closes, and then gets back to the middle, up, down to the middle. Now the hold changes it from a smooth sort of sine wave type of envelope to a static, sort of like a square wave in a way. So we've got smooth. And you know what? I'll actually modulate the pitch with this because it's very easy to hear the pitch modulation without oscillator two, just, okay. Oh yeah, and also with no envelope two modulation so that you're not hearing that looping decay. And then we'd hold all the way up. If I turn ratio down, it becomes quicker and quicker. Now this just changes the curvature again of the way that it rises and drops down and goes back to the middle. So let's go here. So to the left, it's almost like the attack is very, very quick and it decays a little bit slower. So you get a little bit of a pluck from the top frequency to the bottom. Compared to this, where it goes smoothly up, then down like this, it's almost like the attack is brought up brought back and this graph is not very accurate now instead of adjusting the attack and decay and release both like this you could just do the shapes here okay very exactly the same thing and again the velocity here if you turned it up then the higher the velocity the more of an effect you get so the pitch amount is increased or decreased Okay, now you've got a couple of other things. You've got uni, bi, and window. This stands for bipolar and unipolar. Bipolar essentially means, if I put it back on the filter so you can see, that it will modulate with a positive amount and a negative amount from the center point of the control. Unipolar, just a positive amount, so just up and down. And window is exactly the same, essentially. However, you don't have the dedicated attack release shapes. You just have a shape, which kind of changes the shape, the way that it raises and decays. Keep in mind, this is a very, very fast cycle. It's, it's gonna be used by people just to create a little pluck in the beginning of your sound. If you're making a lead or a bass, this would be really useful. Maybe to add a bit of a transient with a noise. For example, we could put this to modulate white noise over here, the amplitude of white noise, we can route the noise to the output and we get that little bit of noise in the beginning. We can speed it up. So just freeze up an envelope. Now you might say, well, you could technically do this with the modulation envelope and you could, but it would be more difficult to do the bipolar version where it goes up and down and then back to the middle. You could only really do that with an LFO but this gives you essentially an LFO that is just one cycle long. So it's really, really useful. Okay, 
onto LFOs. Now, if you're familiar with synthesis, you'll know that LFO stands for low frequency oscillator. And it's basically an oscillator, but it, it doesn't produce any sound. Instead, it modulates any parameter you want of your synthesizer. So we could route LFO4 to modulate the filter frequency so that it opens and closes. Now here, you can sync the rate of the LFO, which means if it's free, it's not synced to the tempo of your track. You determine the rate. I need to turn this off. You determine the rate because this locks the rate. So you cannot actually adjust it once it starts playing. With this, however, turned off, the rate isn't locked. With it synced, however, no oscillator, synced, it syncs the rate to the tempo of your track, which is really useful when you're trying to create rhythmic movement with your sounds. So let's say, now, by the way, of course, you can move them like this, the rates, but you can also click and drag on the numbers to get any value that you want. Like this. Now, mono is useful with an LFO because if I play a note and then I add a second note to the first one, they will have their own LFO cycles, as you just heard. But with mono on, the second one will join in the LFO cycle of the first one. Just like that, and it's really useful. Now, you've got loop. You've got a few other ones. Loop restart, so... Continues. You have loop gate, which stops as soon as you let go of the note. Loop release which doesn't start until you let go of the note. And then you have one shot, which does one cycle and that's it. And one shot release, which only starts when you let go of the note. This over here, MIDI and remote, you wanna keep it on MIDI so that the LFO is triggered whenever you play a MIDI note. Okay, very cool. Now the shapes here, you've got multiple different shapes. Pick and choose the one that you prefer. You've also got a delay, so you can delay the onset of the LFO. Just like this. Got a fall and rise, almost like an attack and release. So that will slowly bring in the LFO. And then the opposite will slowly decay the LFO. Well, in this case, very quickly. What about there? There you go. So it slowly stops the LFO function. In the middle, it's inactive. Okay, it's actually demonstrated here by graph decay. Now you've got bipolar, unipolar, and uni Z. So bipolar, what it does is it creates modulation that has a positive amount and a negative amount. So it goes up and below the actual point of the control. With uh, pitch, for example, this would pitch it up 14 semitones and 14 semitones down. Whereas unipolar would be just positive modulation. It wouldn't go below, only above the point. And UniZ is pretty much the same thing. So they haven't actually, as I said, released a manual for Massive X. So it's difficult to know exactly what UniZ is doing. But the sound is identical to UniZ. Okay. Now you've got also a random LFO, which again is basically just a normal LFO. You still select the rate, but it randomizes the amount that it goes up and down each time. So some will be more and less. You've got a couple of shapes here and the amount of randomization. So this is how high the, the threshold for the amount of amp um, randomization. So let's say this is the highest peak and this is the lowest peak. Do you allow it to go up to the highest peak or only up to halfway? That's what this will do. And this is the randomization of how close the cycles are. So do we keep it perfectly rate synced, but randomize the amp amount? So if we sync the rate, we'll speed it up.
Back to free, and then frequency would be changing the actual randomization of how close those cycles are together. Again, unipolar or bipolar, delay, fall and rise, those are the same as the other LFI. Finally, one other thing I wanna mention is over here, I mentioned before that on loop gate, the LFO restarted cycle whenever you play a new note. Now this is really important because if it's only on loop, then the LFO will continue cycling, oscillating in the background, even if you're not actually playing a sound, which means whenever you play a sound, the LFO will start wherever it is in its current cycle and you can get very inconsistent results such as this. See how every note is different because the filter position is at a different point and everything else the LFO is modulating is at a different point. However, if I turn loop gate on, then every time I play a new note, the LFO will restart from the beginning of its cycle, creating a consistent sound. Now you may have noticed that there is some changes going on. This is because I've actually routed LFO 5 to over here. So I've selected Caspatic uh, wavetable, read it through the gorilla mode, and I'm modulating the gorilla mode overtones very slowly, well, quite slowly, with this shape as well, but only on loop, which means if I'm playing a repeating note, every time it repeats, LFO 5, modulator 5, will have a different point in the cycle that it starts. So it will continue modulating up and down, which is nice if you want to create interest and movement to your tracks. So if I was to simply a few notes here you can hear that morphing occurring i could also add this to this lfo modulate it slowly to this filter line. okay but the ones that are important that need to reset and be the same at the beginning of every note you must set to loop gate not loop Fantastic. I hope this video has been useful and you've learned something. Please go and try and apply everything you've learned so far into your own synthesis. Um, and remember to use the routing matrix because through the routing matrix, you can get some really interesting results. You know, here we've routed the two oscillators through the filter to the output, but then we've routed the noise oscillator through the filter to the output, as well as to another filter. So two voices from the noise in parallel going through two different signal chains. So through the utility effect, straight to the output. We're also getting oscillator two to phase modulate oscillator one. And the capabilities are endless. You know, try and come up with your own, try and try out different combinations and see what sounds you get out of them. So yeah, as I said, I hope this video has been useful and you've learned something. In the next video, we're gonna cover a lot more going into the performers and the key trackings as well, which is gonna be really cool. Um, and keep in mind that if you wanna learn more and you live close to London or Milton Keynes or Surrey, then we offer one-to-one -one DJ music production courses where at the end of the course as well, you get real world opportunities. So we took 22 of our DJ graduates uh, in Ibiza in June, and we did over 20 gigs where we played in Ibiza Rocks Bar, in Pure, in S Paradise, in Eden. And a lot of them actually got scouted and they got invited to go back and get paid to DJ, which is absolutely amazing to see people that have sort of started from scratch and got into that level. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and see you on the next one. Bye-bye.